Now I'm just going to show you how to configure contact ID and report IP in our system. So first thing you want to do, let's start with contact ID, is you would go to programming and you would probably want to start with your phone numbers. So programming phone numbers. And you want to add your phone numbers here. And notice you could put an operating schedule on it and a secondary phone number there. So then you actually put the phone number here, save it. So now it's gonna show up on the left here. Then I'm going to add another number. I'll add the uh, backup number. And so that's all I'm gonna need right now. Now I'm gonna to go to programming services and I'm going to add the name of the service. And again, I might do the name of the service and the monitoring station is going to. One of the most important things is you got to define which service you're going to add here. So I'm going to say contact ID, which is the most common one. You can see here, we do have other ones, including the report IP and SIA, SIA. So just keep that in mind. The service mode here, the default is manual mode. What that means is if the controller ever goes down, like the power goes down and then it comes back on again, you would have to manually restart the service every time. We recommend that you do the other one. So when the controller, if it goes down and it restarts again, it will restart that service when it goes back on. Okay, so we have that. Now in the general tab, we put on the client code which is the account number that the central station gives the end user there. And usually it's the last four digits on that account. And here's your phone number one, two, and phone backup. I just want one number and that's my contact ID one and a backup, which is another contact ID I'm gonna to send to another station, let's say. And you really have to be careful here to click on what things you wanna report out to that central station. So we recommend clicking anything here on the options that says report. So report open inputs, close inputs. So whether it's armed or disarmed, whether there's alarms, any tampers, and then when it restores and also bypass. So those are things you do want to add along with this. Another thing to keep in mind is if you want the service to operate as a backup, you want to make sure that you click that. Also, the log modem events to event buffer. If you click on that, it's going to allow you to see all the communications that are going out to the central station, whether it's successful or not. Uh, we recommend you don't check that right away. If you do check that, then what's going to happen is it's gonna flood your all events window with just every single time it's trying to call out. So we only recommend doing that when you're trying to do troubleshooting. And if you notice the settings here, you're probably not going to have to change this, but if you did, there is standard mapping, large mapping in SIMS2. I'm going to save that. And the next thing I want to do is go to areas and I want to assign that service to whatever areas I want to report out to the station. So I'm going to go to configuration tab here and go to the bottom where it says reporting services and add the contact ID reporting service and save that. And I'm not completely done with this because I want to go back to my services and you actually have to start your service. You have to right click on the record and say start service. Now, if your service stops for any reason, a good troubleshooting suggestion is to go to sites controllers and right click and see if there's any health issues relating to your service being off. If it's off, obviously you want to restart that service. Okay, so that's for contact ID. That's really basically the procedures to set up your contact ID, not that hard. So we go to programming and instead of phone numbers, because you don't need a phone number because it's going through your IP, you're going to just go to services and you're going to add, and maybe I'll call that, IP and 
what central station it is. And then make sure that you pick the correct service type. It defaults to contact ID. You want to change that to report IP. And again, uh, I want to start the service if the controller goes back down and comes back online again. So I'm going to choose one. And in the general here, you're going to see again, a client code. It could go up to eight digits. Just depends on what the company gives you. In the reporting protocol, if you are using our version here, it's Armor IP. If you do use some third-party IP solutions, we can accommodate some of those here. And encryption level, if the IP monitoring station has a certain kind of encryption, you want to pick which kind that they're encrypting with. Then they're going to give you an encryption key. You want to put that in there. So that's again between you and the monitoring station, what that's going to be. And the poll time, you want to change probably to 90 seconds. That's the standard time to call out to the station and make sure that messages are being received on both ends. If after you attempted a certain amount of times with, so for example, in this case, maybe eight times, it's going to then tell you, hey, this isn't communicating and it might then go to your backup service, which in this case, I would recommend you do have two services, one being report IP and if you do have the telephone lines already there, then you might as well use it for contact ID as your secondary so you can do that. Okay, and so for your primary channel here, the IP address here is going to be provided again by your monitoring station. And the port number is generally also going to be given by the monitoring station because they have a certain ports that they're trying to look for. Probably going to keep cable as your adapter there. And again, the port open attempts, it can only go up to eight. And you can have a secondary channel here where you're setting up a second IP. You might use a different internet provider with that one so that if that first one goes down, you, it'll go to that second one. Just like in contact ID, we want to click on the report here. Any reports should go out to the central station. So that's probably you want to check all of those. And just kind of like the contact ID, these log ones would be only if you're troubleshooting, you probably want to check those. And just like in contact ID, once you have that configured, you're going to go to your area. You add the service to that area. Then you go back to services and click on the service and start the service. Okay, so that's your basic configuration for report IP. When you're done configuring all of your areas with the services and you have all your zones set up and assigned to the areas and all that, you want to make sure you go to reports and central station report. Okay, so here you have to pick which reporting service you're going to use. You have multiple ones. You want to make sure it's, you know, whichever one you're trying to get. So usually contact ID here and the output directory is going to initially send it to a temporary folder. You probably want to change that to an actual directory, like your desktop or wherever it is that you want your hard drive that you want to generate this to. Otherwise it might be hard to find later if you're trying to open it. And then you just click generate. It's complete. And now actually you have the ability to just open it. And you notice you have a CSV version of it, or you can have an HTML. And the HTML one is actually looks kind of nice and clear here. So that's the one I usually look at. And that's something you would probably send over now to the central station so that they can make sure that their database is complete. 